it's the 660 the twin and it's a lovely ride especially on a, an open road like this today it's so nice because it feels like an naked it's uh, very maneuverable you can switch it uh, you can switch the direction almost instantaneously but it has the power and funny thing about it uh, although it seems like a twin uh, with the power coming out from this engine at around three or four thousand rpm when you squeeze it some more it's still it's still giving you the power to pass or to get out of the corner very fast at around nine to ten thousand rpm Aprilia just came up with another bike for the 660 power plant that they've built for 2021. Besides the RS, the sports bike, we have the Naked, which is the Tuono. It was pretty fun. Went a couple of uh, kilometers outside the city. A couple of kilometers inside the city. It brings out the hooligan inside me. And I want to ride it fast. I want to skid the rear. I want to pull wheelies because Although it's a bit underpowered than the RS, right now the gearing is a bit shorter and the bike feels more punchy and more aggressive. The engine sound, it's a big surprise. When you start it up, you will feel like, uh, what, this is a Euro 5? It's an Akrapovich? No, it's not. It's just the stock exhaust from the Aprilia. Check it out. It sounds very good. You have all the goodies that the race uh, brother comes with you have the dash you have the suspensions that uh, are very plush and work like magic i think this is a softer um, setup for the suspension you have that cool brembo braking system you have this good looking exhaust looks like insane with this red and this matte black it's it's an impossible not to spot bike in the in the traffic but the most important fact for me is that it feels a bit lighter than the rs and the riding position it's changed yeah it's a roadster i know i'm i'm going to say changed a lot in this video but uh, it's it's pretty nice i rode the, all the bikes that uh, I have from other manufacturers, uh, other roasters in this class. For me, this one feels the best when it comes to twisties. It's very nimble, it feels very agile, and you are very close to the handlebar. You have that wide handlebar, just like uh, on the Tuono. And I think I realize right now what's happening with, uh, with the bigger brother, the Tuono uh, 11,000, because uh, that one is the best in the roaster class just because uh, it has the right amount of power and it feels very lightweight and very easy to ride. Some traffic behind me. No worries with this bike. So besides the mirrors that are always coming off when I ride these bikes, um, it's this triangle that I have with the handlebar and I'm in close reach. I can switch direction very fast and also bring up some weight on the front end. This makes me feel a bit more aggressive a bit more able to ride it fast and this bike can be ridden very very fast i i went like 160 kilometers uh, on the highway yesterday and it felt very stable i know it's not uh, not cool because you don't have the wind protection but you have this large fairing over here small windshield i think you can adapt a, a bigger one uh, this is not an issue i would rather prefer to tell you about uh, the wind protection for the knee area because now it's an aero fairing you can stick your hands into it today was like 10 degrees celsius and uh, it felt uh, pretty cold my knees are still kind of cold but uh, i'm trying to get some heat from this engine covers left and right
So when riding this Tuono, if you ever had the 300cc engine before in the past while growing up, you will get the same feeling. It feels very nimble, very lightweight and very easy to ride. But the difference is that this bike is very capable. The 660 power plant produces a lot of torque and uh, it feels quite chunky. You can pull wheelies at 4000 RPM and then you can pull another wheelie at close to 10,000 RPM. So don't be fooled by the engine architecture because this twin can produce a lot of torque and uh, it will still have some juice to offer while riding high in the revs. That's a pretty nice feeling. Okay, so forgot to tell you guys that this bike has less electronics than uh, the speeder brother. Fortunately, you can go at the dealer and buy everything that the RS has. You can buy the cornering ABS, the quick shifter, and everything that uh, you can wish for. But uh, there's a small price difference. You can reach up to the same price as the RS if you wish to have everything. But it's a must to have a quick shifter on this bike. It rides so beautiful and yeah, with a quick shifter, everything would be magic. You can pull wheelies second gear, you can go to the third gear, fourth gear while wheeling. Right now, you have to have some experience in order to do that. Don't do that, it's a stupid thing to do. But um, it will make you feel like you want to do it. I'm glad that Aprilia changed the headlight because this LED unit, it's providing a lot more light than the usual bulbs. What else, what else, what else? The engine management is pretty cool on this bike. You have the traction control that works like magic. You have three riding modes and uh, you can set it up in individual. You can cut the anti-wheelie. I think um, not many 600cc uh, middleweight roadster have anti-wheelie, so this one has. It's a pretty cool thing. You can uh, set it uh, from one to three. You can um, set up the traction control on 10 stages. So you can have fun with, so it's important, but the engine reacts very nice, it, it's quite cool. Use it mostly on individual with um, maximum power output so I can pull wheelies. But uh, the thing is, it reacts very good, it produces uh, quite a staggering amount of power. So when you are pulling it in a straight line, you will go close to second or third gear. I reached 120 kilometers or even better in the second gear so this means the bike has very good ratio and uh, yeah it's more than a more than a roaster while riding on a highway you can hide you can tuck in behind this windshield and uh, this makes it uh, this makes me consider it as a commuter While going slow in between cars, I was holding the throttle steady, but the bike was like uh, uh, whiskey throttling me. But I think this is a matter of getting used to, to the way the throttle responds. After a couple of days of riding, I had no problem. Right now, we became very close friends and uh, it allows me to have a lot of fun. I thing is for sure, I'm a huge fan of Italian bikes. And this, this Aprilia Tuono 660 proves me that uh, they have a matter of doing things when it comes to handling. So right now, this is a roadster, it's a naked and it reacts very good in between cars. It feels short and it's very easy to go in between lanes while the cars are stopped at the stoplights. This is important for a city bike. If you're thinking about riding it like a hooligan, just like I told you before, uh, you can put it on the individual riding mode and you will uh, have the ABS for the rear off and uh, you can skid the rear but if you want to do stop is the front end will lock up very easy without any huge effort so the brakes are very very damn good for a bike like this so in order not to get it confused guys the tuono doesn't have an imu you can buy this unit from the dealer and with this unit you can uh, also you will also get the cornering abs so what do you think about this saddle? It looks bigger than the one on the Tuono, the big Tuono, the 1100. Uh, it's just like on the RS660. I didn't try that with a passenger, but I will do it. It looks 
comfortable enough and you also have these handles left and right so the passenger won't fall off. I love that the guys at Aprilia have this uh, logo with the 54 world titles won by the mark and um, it's pretty important that they have very cool colors like this uh, I think it's an orange not a red but it looks very very nice and the build quality of the bike it's uh, astonishing I love the way everything goes together and uh, I'm not seeing not even one flaw I'm not a huge fan of stickers but this one's be a racer and the Aprilia logo on the wheel are looking very nice and there's one more detail over here 90 degree valves this is not often met on regular bikes maybe you're imagining that the seat height is pretty low but you can see my legs they are not very bent so this means at 1.8 meters um, the seat height is pretty high and uh, I think it will fit a rider close to 1.60 uh, 1.7 meters but this is the limit the thing is I'm, I'm so eager to test it against other bikes in the class because right now I'm thinking of uh, naming it one of the best or maybe the best in this uh, segment 